just see bushes. at the other side, way off towards the left of our picture. This chap is now galloping towards the road. Why are you galloping towards the road? Did you like that stop, genre? He thought if he didn't cross first, he'd be in trouble. Oh, he's licking his lips at the thought of some caparis bushes, perhaps. Hmm, very good. Oh, that's very special to be so close to them. Isn't that remarkable? I'm not trying to get a full facial shot here. too close. Yes, I need to move my head. I can move forward a bit. Let me move forward slightly and then you can have them on the side of the car. See if they don't fly away. I think they've become so habituated to vehicles, these fellows. Very special indeed. Actually, the world's slowest photographer has not managed to get a shot off. We've got ourselves a puff adder there. A nice example of a puff adder. Quite long, not very fat. There we go. Mmm, coming out into the open, licking the sand and the grass. You can see quite nicely there the concertina movement that it has. It doesn't have that serpentine movement, showing the concertina movement of like a millipede basically, but using its ribs. This is not a snake you want to be bitten by, of course. It is possibly responsible for the most snake bites in Africa. And it has a very powerful cytotoxic venom. throated long claw sitting on a little sign. Isn't that pretty? And it's singing to us. It does have a lovely singing voice, as Louise says. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
right. Well, we've got an elephant and a cisticola, and the cisticola I'm trying to identify, mainly because it's calling so nicely for us. I don't think it's pectoral patch. It's not zitting. I don't think it's desert. Maybe wing snapping. Not wing snapping. Not tiny. Maybe stout. Black headed heron. Just landed in front of us. <sighs> Oof. Mosquitoes are still abundant. This is a beautiful shot of a black-headed heron, though. If you listen in the background, you can hear all those cisticulars calling. And you can also hear the flowing of water. La gugoracha, la gugoracha. Doesn't that mean the cockroach? Loco golochi, loco golochi. Mosquitoes, yes, no, we've noticed that. Thank you. Do you think you could eat a few? Oh, you don't like them. Flies. You like flies and grasshoppers. Okay, well, off you go. for birdies. Look out for them. We could even run into a campsite and prevail upon the owners to give us some breakfast. How gorgeous is this? Very, is the answer. I'm not sure if we'll lose signal. I don't think we will. We might. Wonderful. Oh, and signal is looking fine. Is this not beautiful? Let us stop next to this tree and have a listen. This is what I've been wanting for two days. small proportions myself, I will be able to sleep on this car. You'll have to sleep on the floor, Chandra. I know you have, but you haven't slept. And also I will require more space, you see. Just stunning light again in these beautiful grasslands. Gorgeous, peaceful elephant. Oops. 
<laughs> um, Peggy Dam, look at him now. That's an indication that he's not quite as happy as he once was. Now he is indicating that he's relaxed. Feeding. That sort of gentle flapping of the ears indicating that they are, are trying to cool down as opposed to ears out and demonstrating, you know, and, and head held high, which demonstrates discomfort. And so when the ears stop, like now, you can see his ears are out a bit and they're kind of listening, his head's lifted slightly. He's paying much more attention to us than he was at the beginning. I don't know why that should be the case. Oh, there's a creeping Ipomea. Can you see it there, Jean-Dre? And this water all coming off the catchment basically is formed by our camp. Well, bits and pieces of geology around our camp. We've seen hippo being eaten in here, we've seen hippo sleeping in here, we've seen lots and lots of lions when this is drier. Jandre, can we see the goats and sheep across the way there? Yes, there they are. Now, this is an interesting story, not in so much as I find the biology of goats and sheep particularly fascinating, because I, I don't, I don't know much about it. But it's mainly because what we have here is an interesting demonstration of the relationship between local people and wildlife area. And nobody's quite sure where the boundary is between the park and the communal land. But these hills are grazed by cattle and goats and sheep. There are no fences between us and the communities outside. And a kind of tenuous peace exists, shall we say. I wouldn't describe it as harmony, for there is always some conflict when drought comes along, when resources are short. But there is a tenuous harmony 